Now, I think it's very clear how much I like machetes like this. Big, long bladed tool such as this is really handy and I can get a whole lot of work done. I can clear trails, knock brush out of my way, make short work of really big tasks with a large blade like this. I could also embed it deeply into a tree like that, taking a little breather, walk away from it, and then forget where I placed that thing. <laughs> it's pretty easy to do. Not that, not that we would ever do such a thing because we are professionals, of course. But then all I would be left with is a small knife such as this one, perhaps a pocket knife in my pocket, whatever, a small belt knife that I might be having with me. Now, but now while it is, in my opinion, easier to do small tasks with a large blade like that machete than it is to do big tasks with a small knife, it is still very possible to make a knife small like this one, two and three quarter inch blade, I would think most people would consider that a small knife. It's still possible to do some really big jobs with a knife like this with a little bit of skill. Let's say I needed this larger sapling right here, this, this hardwood, to make myself some sort of larger tool where I could get some bigger jobs done. What I would do is I'd bend this thing over and I would stress the fibers on the wood itself. And then what I could do is I could either whack it with my knife or I could just do some downward pressure at about a 45 degree angle. With my little knife and one push, I was able to clear pretty much half of the wood right there. If you like these tips and tricks videos, guys, make sure you're hitting that thumbs up and subscribing if you haven't done so already. Oh, and leave us a comment, thanks. Stress the fibers right where it's bent the most. That's where you push. Sometimes you gotta go through. This is a hardwood, so if it was a pine, it sometimes goes all the way through in that first push. And just like that, we're through a good size, what is that, maybe inch and a half in diameter, give or take tree. Let's say I wanted to make myself some sort of club or walking stick or a piece of my shelter or something out of this branch that I just cut down. What I would do is just use my time and my tool efficiently, and I would just beaver chew my way around it by making small push cuts all the way around. And then once I've beaver chewed my way all the way around it, I'll just break it. And you're left with pretty much that. And if I wanted to, if I was interested, I could just clean that up with my knife like so. And there you have it. One method that works really good if you're using a small knife like this to get rid of a lot of material really fast is called the chest lever. I had no idea this even had a name until I guess a few years ago, but because I, I, I always did it, but never knew it had an actual name. So you hold this against your chest, the chest lever, hold this against your chest like this and the blade doesn't move. All you're moving is the material. So I hold it firmly against my chest and I pull the material away, just like that. Pull the material away, keeping the knife still. And it's a very safe way to apply a lot of force, a lot of force to the project that you're doing and get a lot of material gone in a short time. Sharpening a stake, something like that. Um, just cleaving off an end of it like this, whatever. It works really well. Very efficient way I'm pulling, pulling it apart like this, using my back muscles that are really strong, a lot stronger and it'll fatigue you a lot less than doing these push cuts if you're trying to get a lot of material gone. This is good for like finer work. You know, if you're trying to take off just a little bit at a time, small little shavings like this. But if I'm really trying to get some big stuff done, I do that and I can remove large chunks large chunks of wood in a hurry. And when it comes to a survival knife, they always say, you know, the best survival knife is the one you have on you. 
And I'm much more likely to carry this knife with me every single day than I am a big, large Bowie knife that I could, that could only be carried on a belt, you know, at least comfortably. So having this, it's most likely, if I ever end up in some sort of survival situation, this is probably what I'm going to have, right? Some sort of small knife, maybe a folder, might be a fixed blade. I prefer a fixed blade because you can beat on them. Um, a folder will fail you if you try to beat on it pretty hard. So that's why I prefer a small fixed blade like this one. Now I've got an additional tool here that I can use to make my small knife work even more. Now let's say I wanted to limb this branch and I needed some of the smaller pieces off of here for whatever I was gonna make bedding or something for my survival shelter. It's easy to cut off some of these smaller branches here, but some of the bigger ones take a little bit more effort. So what I like to do, one method that I like to do, and one of the reasons, one of the reasons why I like a lanyard on my knife like this, I don't always have lanyards on my knives, but this one I like to keep one on there because I can choke way down on the knife. What I'll typically do is put my pinky in there like that, and then I'll hold the knife at the very back of it like this. And what that allows me to do is flick the knife in this, in this fashion right here, very safely, very securely. I've never had it come out of my hand or spin around and cut me, none of that. It can't do it. I use this actually all the time when I'm riding on the tractor and I'm bush hogging or something, and there's briars that are coming across my face and trying to jab my eyeballs out. <laughs> I'll take my knife out of its sheath, I'll stick my finger through the little lanyard there, and I'll whack those briars like this, chop those briars out of my way, and it works really, really good. So if I wanted to limb this branch right here, I would do the same method. Just choke way down on the knife, and let's say I wanted to cut this part off. There we go, just a few whacks, and I'm through a fairly good size piece of the branch. Yeah, I mean, I could get in here and work on it like that and put a lot of effort in there, but this method requires very little energy. I mean, I'm, I'm not exerting any force really on that at all. And it cuts through very effortlessly without straining my muscles. And now that I've got my larger tool here, my baton, I can make short work of larger pieces of wood like this one. Again, it makes a, if it's a small knife, it's really, really handy to have that little lanyard on there so you can choke back on the knife and then whack away. And if I, let's say I needed, needed to process a whole bunch of smaller branch like saplings like this, I could always get my measurement, move it where I need to and whack. And then get my measurement, move it where I need to and whack. And then I've got myself kind of an assembly line going on here and I can get myself a whole bunch of the same size branches really, really quick. And then even if I need to get through something bigger like this, Let's say I've got to get through this like one inch size sapling here. A few whacks and I'm through. Nice and clean. And I could use that same principle, that batoning principle, to cut through a really large piece of wood like this one. This is, this is good size. I could still get through something like this in fairly short order just by kind of beaver chewing my way through using that batoning method. This is a little bit far gone. It's pretty soft actually and fairly rotten, but I think you guys will get the point. It takes a minute, but you can still make relatively short work with a small blade like that. Now another method that works quite well that I've actually employed a lot with big blades and small blades actually, this works with big machetes just like the small knife, is stabbing it into a, a larger piece of material like this big log here, like that. Maybe a little too deep right there. There we go. Planting it in a large piece of wood like that and then just like we did that chest lever, we're moving the piece of wood as opposed to the knife. And this is actually a really, really safe way of, of using a knife. The chances of getting cut doing a method of like this, even if you're injured already, or you're tired, weak, dehydrated, this is a very safe way of using your blade very efficiently to cut through a fairly large 
piece of of wood and if you are tired fatigued already from your survival ordeal it takes very little effort to do this it's really efficient look at that and i'm through this piece of wood which would otherwise have taken me you know probably twice that long if i'm just whittling on it it's a very controllable method too i can get very very fine shavings on here and i can control what i'm doing by just manipulating the stick and not the blade so if you're a beginner with a knife you know you haven't had a lot of knife experience this method works excellent for making feather sticks for helping get your fire going i mean i'm not having to apply any effort at all plus having a good sharp knife that's that's really important a dull knife is not very useful and potentially more dangerous because you have to apply more force to it but this requires almost no effort whatsoever and really safe and really accurate a very accurate method of using my knife to make small precise fine shavings like that a lot of people think that you need a big knife to do a lot of jobs, like for example, butchering animals. I have taken deer, full size, well over 200 pound bucks, and processed them from the animal roaming the woods, wild and free, to in the freezer using nothing but this knife right here. It's very good for that actually. A smaller knife is actually much easier to manipulate and to choke up on like this and to, and to get in there and do the fine detailed uh, deboning and stuff like that. And, and for gutting the animal, this works really, really good. You can slide underneath the hide and, and separate the, um, and cut the, cut the hide without getting into the guts. Without question, if you knew what you were doing, you could process an entire elephant with a small little knife like this. I mean, our ancestors did mastodons and, um, and woolly mammoths with small little stones and small little hand axes. So this is a very effective tool if you know what you're doing with it. This is bamboo. And a lot of people don't have access to bamboo. I understand that, but the principle is the same. If I, I can use my blade, the sharp edge of my knife to process it into tender, I can use the back of the knife, the 90 degree spine, if it's got a sharp 90 degree spine to scrape tender off of the bamboo. You could do this on cedar trees, the bark off cedar trees, poplar bark, lots of different things you could use the same method for so yeah like right now i'm using the back of the knife that 90 degree spine i could switch it over and use the blade if i want to get some really nice curls really nice shavings i'll use the sharp side like that and in just a couple minutes of effort with this tiny little knife i could have myself a large pile of shavings a tender bundle to get my fire started now, I don't always wear a neck knife. I typically actually wear this knife or one like it on my belt. But if you were wearing it on a neck lanyard like this, this one's made of paracord, really, really strong cordage. And this is enough cordage that I could do a bow drill fire using just this cordage alone. So with my knife and the sheath, in conjunction with the sheath and the cordage, I could get myself a fire. Now, something that a knife of this size won't be very good at is batoning and splitting large diameter chunks of wood. It just, it just won't do it because it's not big enough to do it. But to be honest with you, I have, I can't think of a single situation ever that I've needed to split down large, big, round chunks, pieces of wood with the exception of maybe building a bow drill set. But even then you can get around it. You don't have to do that. Yeah, I know you can access the dry inner parts of the wood by doing such a thing, but I, I've never had to do this. So, and I'm not saying I won't ever need to do this, and I guess having a larger knife is handy in that aspect. It'll just do bigger jobs easier. But the possibility, the chances of needing to do something like that, I think are fairly, fairly slim. And if this is more comfortable to carry, if this is easier to carry and you're more likely to have it on you, Having the skills to use this thing to do bigger jobs is, is really important. Now let's say I wanted to split this round right here to access the wood on the inside. I could probably, maybe, this is, this is on the very edge of it being too big for my small knife here. With my baton, maybe not. 
I could probably get away with it. I could probably end up splitting this piece of wood with my knife, but also something that I could do is I could make myself some wedges. I've just made myself a tiny little wedge right here. I think you can use your imagination to understand that this could be much bigger if you needed it to be. But this small little wedge right here, where my knife was too small to baton through and split this, I could now potentially drive this wedge into this piece of wood right here and bust it in half. There it goes. So I'm just driving, driving my tiny little wedge into this bigger piece of wood that my knife was potentially too small to split. And it's almost there. If my wedge was a tiny bit bigger, I think I'd have it, but I could probably just do, probably do something like this, just being creative. There we go, watch that. So just thinking outside the box, I could probably end up splitting this thing all the way through. There we go. So now I can access that inside of the wood and I just had to create a bigger tool or another tool with my small knife here. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Leave me a comment, tell me what you think. If I left out some tips and tricks, tricks of using a small knife for big jobs, I'd be grateful for that, and I can't wait to see you on the next one.